Imagine this, a busy city, people rushing to and fro, and life buzzing around every corner. But in one small, unassuming flat, someone has been dead for over two years and no one noticed. Not a single knock at the door, no curious neighbor, no family member searching for answers. How does this happen? Who was Joyce Vincent and what led to her tragic, unnoticed death? Today on Crime Pulse Stories, we unravel the heartbreaking mystery of a woman lost in plain sight. In the heart of bustling North London, a housing association official unlocked the door of a small bedsit in January of 2006. They were there for routine work, repossessing a property where the tenant had fallen behind on rent. But the scene inside was anything but routine. The air was thick with an unshakable staleness. A television buzzed softly, still playing static. Wrapped Christmas presents sat on the floor, their ribbons curling slightly with age. And then there was the skeleton. The remains of Joyce Vincent were discovered in her flat, slumped in front of the television. Her identity was unknown at the time, and what was left of her life story was scattered in fragments around the room. The questions were immediate. Who was she? How could someone live and die so alone in one of the busiest cities in the world? Stay with me, because this story only gets more haunting. Joyce Carol Vincent was born in the mid-1960s in Hammersmith, London, to Caribbean immigrant parents. Her early life was marked by both promise and pain. When she was just a child, tragedy struck her mother passed away, leaving Joyce and her siblings in the care of their father, a man described as emotionally unavailable and strict. Despite this turbulent foundation, Joyce's vivacious spirit set her apart. Friends described her as magnetic, a woman who could light up a room with her laugh. She was fashionable, charming, and had an innate ability to connect with others. Her social circle was wide and, intriguingly, included connections within the vibrant music scene of the 1980s and 90s. Some even claimed she rubbed shoulders with celebrities, attending high-profile events and concerts. But beneath this lively exterior, there were fractures. Those closest to her often remarked that Joyce carried a private pain she rarely shared. Her laughter could mask sadness, and her charisma sometimes served as a shield. Who was the real Joyce Vincent, and what forces led her to such an isolated fate? As we delve deeper, her life becomes a puzzle, with pieces that don't quite fit. And the closer we look, the more haunting the mystery becomes. Joyce Vincent's life was one of striking contrasts. By all outward appearances, she was a woman on the rise. She worked at renowned companies, including the prestigious Ernst & Young, where she held a steady position surrounded by accomplished professionals. Her personal life, too, had glimpses of glamour friends recounted her attending exclusive events, mingling with prominent figures, and even claiming to have met Nelson Mandela at a concert in the early 1990s. Yet, beneath the surface of this seemingly charmed life was a pattern of restlessness and instability. Joyce had a tendency to leave jobs suddenly, often without explanation. She moved frequently, never staying in one place long enough to form deep roots. While she remained radiant in public, her private life was becoming increasingly fragmented. Friends described her as someone who could disappear without a word, only to reappear later as if nothing had happened. But as the years went on, her absences grew longer and her reappearances less frequent. The question loomed, was this restlessness simply part of her free-spirited nature or was something darker driving her away from stability? Little did anyone know, Joyce's life was edging toward a point of no return and the glamorous exterior would soon give way to a haunting reality. By the early 2000s, Joyce Vincent's life took a sharp and troubling turn. In 2001, she abruptly resigned from her job and moved into a shelter for survivors of domestic abuse. This move marked a significant shift in her once vibrant and connected existence. Whatever hardships she faced, Joyce kept them hidden, sharing little with those who cared about her. 
it was during this period that the once social and charismatic woman began retreating from the world. She severed ties with friends one by one, and her contact with family dwindled until it stopped altogether. For those who had known Joyce, her sudden silence was baffling. Messages went unanswered, and attempts to locate her were met with dead ends. Some assumed she was simply living her life elsewhere, perhaps even abroad. After all, Joyce had always been somewhat enigmatic. But behind closed doors, her isolation deepened. Friends and family were left with only memories of the lively, spirited woman they once knew, unaware of how far she was slipping away. Was this self-imposed solitude a way to escape an unseen struggle, or had circumstances beyond her control forced her into this lonely path? As the years passed, Joyce Vincent faded quietly into obscurity, with no one realizing how completely she had vanished. Her isolation was not just a personal withdrawal, it was a disappearance in plain sight, one that would only be discovered when it was far too late. In February of 2003, Joyce Vincent moved into what would be her final home, a small bedsit located above a bustling shopping center in Wood Green, North London. The flat was owned by the Metropolitan Housing Trust, a space often allocated to individuals rebuilding their lives after hardship. In Joyce's case, it was a continuation of her retreat into anonymity, a place where she could live quietly, unnoticed by the world around her. The bedsit itself was modest, unremarkable, a single room with a kitchenette and a small living area. It was functional, but devoid of the warmth that might indicate a thriving life within its walls. For Joyce, it became both a sanctuary and a prison, a place where she could disappear entirely from the social fabric of London. Neighbors barely noticed her comings and goings. Sam later recalled faint glimpses a quiet, polite woman who rarely interacted with anyone. To them, she was just another tenant in a sea of anonymity, one of many lives passing silently in the city's crowded corridors. But this flat held the beginning of the end for Joyce Vincent. It was here that her gradual isolation would take its final form. Behind the locked door of that bedsit, her life slipped further into the shadows, unnoticed and unremembered by those who once knew her. What happened in those final months remains shrouded in mystery. Was Joyce Vincent's solitude her own choice, or was she trapped in circumstances she couldn't escape? Whatever the answer, the world outside her door moved on, oblivious to the tragedy unfolding within. In the years that followed Joyce Vincent's move to the wood green bedsit, her existence faded into complete obscurity. Neighbors barely noticed her presence or her absence. They assumed the flat was unoccupied, its silence blending seamlessly into the quiet hum of the shopping center below. Even when a faint, unpleasant odor began to waft through the hallways, it was dismissed as nothing more than the result of nearby bins or lingering city smells. The flickering glow of her television became the only sign of life within the flat. The set remained on, its dull noise filling the emptiness day and night. To anyone passing by, it might have seemed like an ordinary home where someone was simply keeping to themselves. What masked her disappearance even further was technology. Joyce's bills were automatically deducted from her government benefits, ensuring that no overdue notices or complaints drew attention to her flat. The modern conveniences meant to simplify life instead concealed her death. No one knocked on her door. No one checked on her well-being. For over two years, Joyce Vincent remained in that room, her fate unnoticed by the world outside. The bustling city, filled with millions of lives, continued to move forward, oblivious to the quiet tragedy unfolding behind that locked door. The question looms larger than ever. How could someone vanish so completely, so unnoticed, in the heart of one of the busiest cities in the world? The answers, if they exist, may lie in the haunting details that followed her discovery. By the time Joyce Vincent's remains were discovered, the passage of over two years had left little behind to provide definitive answers.
her body, reduced to skeletal remains, offered no clear evidence to determine the exact cause of her death. The coroner's report concluded that there was no sign of foul play, but the absence of detailed forensic clues left room for speculation. It's believed that Joyce may have succumbed to natural causes, perhaps an untreated asthma attack or complications from a peptic ulcer. Both conditions, if left unaddressed, could have caused a sudden and fatal decline. Yet, without tangible evidence, these theories remain just that possibilities floating in the absence of certainty. What's most haunting is the image of those final moments. Was Joyce alone, struggling for breath, unable to call for help? Did she feel the weight of isolation closing in as her life ebbed away? The thought of her dying in silence, just feet away from a city teeming with life, is a haunting reminder of the fragility of human connection. While her physical cause of death remains a mystery, the emotional circumstances surrounding it, her isolation, her separation from loved ones, paint a stark picture of the profound loneliness that marked her final years. The unanswered questions about how and why she died linger, deepening the sorrow and intrigue of her tragic story. When news of Joyce Vincent's discovery broke, it ignited a media firestorm. Headlines around the world latched onto the chilling irony of her fate, a woman who had lived and died unnoticed in the heart of one of the busiest cities in the world. The story wasn't just about her death, it was about the haunting implications of her isolation. How could this happen in London? a city brimming with millions of people. The media raised uncomfortable questions about urban life, where neighbors live mere feet apart but remain strangers. Reporters delved into the layers of Joyce's story, painting her as both a tragic figure and a stark symbol of society's growing disconnection. Images of her flat, modest and untouched, with the flickering television and unopened Christmas presents circulated widely, capturing the public's imagination. These haunting details became emblematic of her solitude, provoking outrage, sorrow and introspection. How many others, the stories asked, might be similarly hidden, their lives slipping away unnoticed? Social commentators weighed in, exploring themes of neglect, the erosion of community bonds, and the alienation that often accompanies urban life. Joyce Vincent's story wasn't just a tragedy, it was a mirror, reflecting back the cracks in modern society. For days, her name trended in news cycles, sparking debates that went beyond her individual case. But while the world mourned this cautionary tale, few answers emerged about the woman behind the headlines. Joyce Vincent had become a symbol, her personal story overshadowed by the larger societal questions her death represented. The frenzy had brought her back into the world's consciousness, but it left behind even more mysteries about the life she had led and the circumstances that led to her heartbreaking end. In 2011, filmmaker Carol Morley released a haunting docudrama titled Dreams of a Life. The film sought to answer the lingering questions about Joyce Vincent's life and the circumstances of her unnoticed death. It was more than just a recounting of facts. It was an emotional excavation, piecing together the fragments of a woman who had been both loved and forgotten. Morley's approach was deeply personal. She reached out to anyone who had known Joyce, gathering interviews from former friends, colleagues, and acquaintances. What emerged was a complex and often contradictory portrait. Joyce was described as magnetic, vibrant, and full of potential, a woman who once lit up rooms and formed connections with ease. But those same interviews also revealed a pattern of withdrawal, a gradual distancing that no one could fully explain. The documentary interwove these testimonials with reconstructed scenes blurring the line between fact and narrative to bring Joyce's story to life. It portrayed her not just as a victim of tragic circumstances, but as a multi-dimensional person with dreams, struggles and secrets. Viewers were left to grapple with the same unanswered questions that had haunted those who knew her. Why had Joyce chosen to isolate herself so completely? Was it a conscious decision, or was she overwhelmed by forces she couldn't control? 
Dreams of a life didn't provide all the answers, but it did something equally powerful. It humanized Joyce, reminding the world that behind the headlines was a real person, full of contradictions and complexities. The film resonated deeply with audiences, sparking renewed conversations about urban loneliness and societal neglect. It also ensured that Joyce Vincent's name would not fade into obscurity again. Through dreams of a life, her story became a lasting testament to the importance of connection, the fragility of human bonds, and the devastating consequences when those bonds break. Even with all the information uncovered, Joyce Vincent's story remains steeped in mystery. The facts tell us where she lived, who she once was, and the circumstances surrounding her tragic death. But the deeper, more human questions, the why of it all linger, unanswered and haunting. Why did Joyce Vincent, a woman known for her warmth and charisma, choose to isolate herself so completely? Was it a deliberate decision to vanish from the lives of those she knew, or was she silently battling struggles too overwhelming to share? Could she have been hiding from something or someone? These questions remain at the heart of her enigma. And how could her death, in one of the busiest cities in the world, go unnoticed for over two years? Were there missed opportunities for intervention, moments when someone could have knocked on her door, made a call, or noticed her absence? Her case has forced many to confront uncomfortable truths about the growing alienation in urban life. Then there are the haunting details. The unopened Christmas presents, the humming television, the lack of contact from friends and family. What do these fragments say about the life Joyce was leading in her final days? Were they symbols of hope, routine, or despair? For those who knew her, the unanswered questions carry a heavy weight of guilt and sorrow. For those learning her story, they provoke a different kind of unease, a chilling realization of how easily someone can disappear, even in plain sight. Joyce Vincent's life ended in silence, but her story continues to echo, raising questions that challenge us all. How does a person become invisible? And more importantly, how do we ensure that it doesn't happen again? These questions are as much about us as they are about her, a haunting legacy of a life both remembered and forgotten. Joyce Vincent's story is a chilling reflection of the potential for isolation in our increasingly urbanized and fast-paced world. In a city like London, teeming with millions of people, her unnoticed death is a grim reminder of how disconnected modern life can become. Her tragedy challenges us to rethink the value of community and the responsibility we bear for those living around us. The case forces a difficult question. Are we too absorbed in our own lives to notice those who might be slipping through the cracks? Joyce's story has become a symbol, a cautionary tale about what can happen when we lose touch with the people in our neighborhoods and communities. In Joyce's case, technology played a silent but pivotal role. Automatic bill payments ensured that her rent and utilities were covered for months after her death, creating the illusion that life continued within her flat. Meanwhile, the persistent hum of her television masked the absence of activity, giving passers-by the false impression that she was still there. This reliance on technology raises unsettling questions about its dual nature. While it connects us in countless ways, it can also foster isolation, allowing individuals to slip through unnoticed. Joyce's death prompts reflection on how modern conveniences, designed to simplify life, can inadvertently create barriers that conceal human tragedy. When Joyce's remains were discovered, her neighbors were as shocked as the rest of the world. Interviews revealed that most had little interaction with her, some barely even recalling her face. For many, the notion that someone had died just feet away without anyone noticing was deeply unsettling. This detachment, while shocking, is a hallmark of urban living. People in densely populated areas often coexist without forming meaningful connections. Joyce's neighbors assumed the unusual odors or constant glow of her television were someone else's problem, a common mindset in crowded cities. 
Her story underscores the dangers of this indifference, where lives can quietly fade away without raising alarm. One of the most poignant gaps in Joyce Vincent's story is the silence from her family. Her relatives declined to participate in the documentary Dreams of a Life, leaving critical parts of her personal history unspoken. Why did their relationships with Joyce unravel? What circumstances led to such complete estrangement? This absence of information deepens the mystery surrounding her isolation. Was Joyce's withdrawal from family ties a result of personal choice, unresolved conflict, or something else entirely? Without their perspective, her story remains incomplete, shrouded in unanswered questions that may never be resolved. Their silence speaks volumes about the complexity of familial relationships and the profound ways in which they can shape or fracture a life. While we may never know the full truth, their absence adds another layer of heartbreak to Joyce's already tragic tale. The mystery of Joyce Vincent's life and death has led experts to examine the psychological factors that may have driven her gradual withdrawal from society. Depression, often silent and invisible, could explain her increasing isolation, as could unresolved trauma from her past. Growing up without her mother and in a distant relationship with her father may have left emotional scars that shaped her adult life. Some have suggested that Joyce's isolation may have stemmed from a deep desire for privacy, possibly fueled by a need to escape the pressures of her life or past relationships. Whether it was a conscious choice or the result of mental health struggles, her gradual disappearance from the lives of those who loved her paints a portrait of a woman struggling to find her place in the world, a struggle that ultimately led to her unnoticed demise. Joyce Vincent's unnoticed death is more than just a tragic story. It's a stark commentary on societal neglect. It highlights the invisibility of individuals who, for various reasons, slip through the cracks of modern life. How does a person go unnoticed for over two years in a city filled with millions? Her story forces us to confront the reality of loneliness and urban alienation. Her case also raises broader questions about the failures of social systems meant to protect vulnerable individuals. If the safety nets in place couldn't prevent this tragedy, what does that say about the systems we rely on? Joyce's death challenges society to reevaluate its priorities, focusing not only on policies but also on the human connections that can make a difference. Joyce Vincent's story while heartbreaking, has resonated far beyond the realm of true crime. Her life and death have inspired artistic tributes in music, literature and film, turning her into a symbol of loneliness, invisibility and the profound need for connection. The haunting details of her story have been immortalized in songs and writings that reflect on the fragility of human bonds and the importance of community. These works ensure that Joyce's name and legacy live on, provoking thought and inspiring change in how we perceive and address isolation. Through these tributes, Joyce Vincent's life is transformed from a tragic cautionary tale into a reminder of the shared humanity that binds us all. In remembering her, artists, audiences and society at large are urged to see and truly acknowledge the people around them. Years after her discovery, Joyce Vincent's story remains a haunting touchstone for discussions about urban isolation, mental health, and the fragile web of human relationships. Her life and death have sparked debates about how modern societies often fail to address the needs of those slipping into solitude. Her case continues to resonate, especially in a world increasingly shaped by technology and individualism. It forces us to confront difficult truths about the disconnection that can arise even in densely populated cities. Joyce's story is more than a tragedy. It is a mirror reflecting our shared responsibility to see and support those around us. Joyce Vincent's life and death are a stark reminder that isolation is often invisible. Her story challenges us to reach out to knock on a neighbor's door, to check in on an old friend, to notice when someone begins to fade from view. 
It's a call to foster connections that bridge the gaps in our communities to ensure that no one is left to suffer in silence. The tragedy of Joyce Vincent isn't just her untimely death. It's the years she spent unnoticed. Her case compels us to take action, to be vigilant and compassionate, and to rebuild the communal bonds that are too often lost in the modern world. The mystery of Joyce Vincent's life and death remains unsolved, but her story lingers as a powerful and painful reminder of the importance of human connection. It highlights the tragic consequences of neglect and the pervasive loneliness that can exist even in the most crowded places. Through her story, we are reminded of the need to see one another, not just in passing, but truly see. Joyce Vincent's legacy lies in the questions she leaves behind, questions that challenge us to be better neighbors, friends, and members of society. Though she is gone, her story serves as a light in the darkness, urging us to create a world where no one is invisible.